we're taking a little road trip. Don't worry, I'm just in the driveway. And I've never done this before, so I hope it comes out okay. Anyway, it's bucket list time here at the farm. A little unfarm related stuff, a little more automotive related stuff here. Oh, oh God. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, it is time to go on a road trip because we're going to pick up a Yugo. Yeah, a Yugo. Come see the Yugo. 1988 Yugo GV for sale. That's eh, a little bit of a drive, almost two hours, but I have always wanted a Yugo. I know. Stop laughing. It's true. When I was a kid, that was the first car that I was really interested in before I got my driver's license. And when I got my driver's license, it was not getting a Yugo. But that's about to change. After all these years, there's one for sale. It looks relatively clean. I'm gonna go take a look at it. Got the tow hitch, got all the stuff hooked up. Hopefully, if it's the right car at the right price, it'll be behind the old T100 on the ride home. So, let's go see if we can find Yugo. Well, there it is. 1988 Yugo GV. Coming home. It's already been quite a process. Let's hope the rest of it goes easier. I doubt it. Had to take the front bumper off. I was going to try to use my pull behind dolly, but that didn't work. So I had to go to U-Haul, rent a, a dolly. So that kind of sucks. Anyway, we'll talk more when I get to the house. Let's go. I don't know if you can see it or not, but yeah. Got the old Yugo hooked up. Now, we're on our way home. And what a great car it is. Rocking a 1.1 liter engine, producing about 45 horsepower when it was new in 1988. I would imagine if it were running, it put out about 30 horsepower now. But it's not running. It's a Yugo GV. It's actually in pretty darn good shape for its age. Of course, most of these cars have gone off to the junkyard, which is kind of sad because they really were cool cars. They had a terribly bad rap, though. People hated on them. They became the butt of at least a thousand jokes. And uh, some of it was deserved, but most of it really wasn't. Let me sneak around here to the front. I'll show you the inside here in a second. The Yugo GV... The GV Plus and the GVX and the GVS, they weren't bad cars at all. They were basic transportation. And if you take a look at a car like this and you realize that it's just basic transportation, and here's a 30 year old example of basic transportation, well, then they must not have been that bad because this one was still trucking up until about a week ago. This one's got just shy of 200,000 miles on it. I don't know how many owners it's had. I know the last owner drove the heck out of it. Didn't do a lot in the way of maintenance. And that is where and why these cars got such a bad rap. They have a timing belt system, not unlike modern cars. And if you don't replace that timing belt every 30,000 miles, they break at about 40,000 miles. And when they break, because it's an interference engine, they collide valves and cause all kinds of problems. That's not what happened to this car, however. This car was just neglected. The water pump started leaking on it, and rather than replace it, I got it for $350. Brought it home the other day, because I've been looking for one of these for, oh, since I was about 14. And here it is. I've already got an engine on order. Found one in the same state, which is kind of nice. For $75 more than I paid for the car. I got it for $375 delivered. Only has 29,000 miles on it, and it's an upgrade. It's the 1.3 liter that came in the GVX, so it'll be a little bit of a boost in horsepower. So that's cool. Now, my plans for this car are to drive the piss out of it. Seriously. That's my plan. I'm going to fix it up and drive it. I've been busy. <laughs> Got my little bucket list item here, the Yugo GV that I picked up a while back. 
And uh, as you can see, I've got the motor out of it and the transmission and just about everything else. The interior's been gutted, except for the carpeting. And uh, I'm already starting to put things back together, so the project's moving along quite nicely. I'm hoping to be driving this thing by early spring. And I think that's uh, more than a possibility. I think, I think uh, short of unexpected issues, once I get it back in the car, that'll happen. As you can see here, here's the old motor that was basically toast. It's salvageable. Uh, I would have to pull it apart, have the head milled, put a new head gasket on it, really clean it out, uh, and then it hadn't spun a bearing, but uh, you know it had oil mixing with water for at least 50 miles, I would imagine, from the looks of it. So there's no telling how badly scored the uh, cylinders or the bearings are. So I think I will probably just pull the head and set it aside and uh, the block if anyone's interested in it contact me it's a good running block it hasn't thrown a rod or anything it's just uh, because of the head gasket failure and the uh, previous owners issues with the car not the best cared for I think it has about 130,000 miles on it if anyone's interested anyway I picked up this beautiful motor here which was I would say the deal of the century uh, this little baby came right here from North Carolina down by the coast, including freight to my place of business. This thing cost me less than $350, so I'm extremely pleased with that. And as you can see, I've got it in a state of uh, repair itself. I'm taking components off, and I'm obviously replacing all the engine oil seals while I have it out of the car. I've got a new clutch and uh, pressure plate that I purchased for it, new timing belts, uh, new water pump. A lot of new hoses so I'm kind of giving it a refresh I'm not going to break it down and rebuild it because uh, according to the junkyard that had it this car has been on the shelf for almost 20 years it spins over beautifully it actually only had 27,000 miles on it the car that it came off of had rolled so the body was destroyed but the engine had so low a mileage that he decided to hang on to it and there it has sat for years and years and years in fact he was quite surprised when somebody called him interested in this motor. It is the 1.1 liter. I thought it was a 1.3, but it is not. It looks to me to be the 1.1. That's okay, 55 horsepower will do just fine. So I'm gonna finish that up, probably take another couple weeks here. And uh, I've got the transmission all cleaned up. I'm replacing uh, the input shaft seal on that. Obviously, uh, I'm gonna replace a couple other little pieces. I've got the whole flywheel kit with the throw out bearing. I've got a new bushing for this side. So it's gonna be, pretty much uh, as refreshed as you can be without tearing stuff apart. Uh, one of the axles, the axle on this side, the boot was bad, so I'll be rebuilding that axle, putting a fresh boot on it. Oh, man, lots of stuff going on mechanically. Obviously, while I've got everything out of the engine compartment, I've been cleaning it up. A uh, lot of, uh, how do I put this, ingenuity going on in the engine bay. A lot of previous repairs were done, you know, and I know, I'm not bashing on this at all. Uh, repairs done out of necessity. Uh, where money was tight, obviously, so they kind of rigged stuff up. Uh, I don't have a problem with that in personal life, uh, but I'm trying to fix it up, trying to get it back as close to stock as I can. So I'm trying to undo a lot of that work while I have the opportunity to get in here and reach around and get to the cables and the hoses and you know that kind of stuff. There's a few electrical issues that I've got the original wiring diagrams a, a person has sent to me. So I'm trying to undo some modifications that uh, were done to the electrical system. And then on the inside, and this is where it gets really interesting, the inside, someone had switched the driver's seat and the passenger seat around um, the seat, uh, driver's seat, well, what's going to be the driver's seat, it's pretty well wore out, so I understand why they did it. Uh, they also damaged the frame, so you can't adjust the seat, so I'm in the process of trying to repair that metal work. Um, I'd like to get uh, original seat coverings for it, or just find a replacement seat, but so far, not much luck. These are pretty rare cars. I'm finding out rare than uh, I remembered them being. So I'm having a little trouble locating some of the smaller pieces. If anyone has a lead on Yugo parts, let me know. Obviously, you, uh, eBay has been my main uh, source of components, but uh, I'd love to find something local. Let's see, other than that, I've already done it, uh, so I can't show you what it looked like without it, but the original dashboard was broken in uh, multiple places. And uh, amazingly, on eBay, I found one for a very reasonable price with shipping that was in perfect condition. So I went ahead and bought that, and I've already gone on and switched it out. 
working on installing a new radio for it uh, and the rear hatch is open right now because I've got the lock assembly out of it I'm doing some repair work on it that's it uh, just an update on what I'm spending my winter here doing at uh, Farpoint Farms and uh, man I can't wait for spring because I can't wait to drive this thing to work just go cruising in town maybe taking on a trip there's another uh, user out there named uh, Austin's Garage he's got a Yugo it's a Kind of like this. It looks pretty much like this. Got a little bit of different shade. I've been communicating with him via email, and it's possible that maybe in the spring we'll have a meetup. He's down in Georgia. I'm in North Carolina. Maybe we'll meet there. Maybe we'll meet here. Maybe we'll meet somewhere in between, and we'll have the probably first annual Yugo car meet. <laughs> and I would imagine since uh, 1986 when these babies came out. So uh, something else to look forward to, or a possibility anyway. It's been really cold for the last week, well below uh, the teens. As a matter of fact, we've gotten into negative, te <laughs> negative teens over the last couple of days. So I haven't been spending much time out here in the garage. But today it got up to a whopping 25. So I uh, got the fireplace fired up and decided to do some work on this. And if you look over here, you'll notice that uh, there's some stains and some nuts and bolts, but no more old engine. That's right, I've got it broken down. The head's off of it. I'm going to resell that if anyone's interested. And the block is over waiting to be recycled. Um, but back to this engine. I've got a brand new clutch and clutch pack. Uh, you know, the pressure plate. and got that all set up and ready to go. So that's in there. Also have a new rear seal installed. And on the front, that's where most of the work's been going today. Everything's kind of slow going. A lot of pieces that I can't find replacements for. So I'm having to be real gentle with but uh, up here, I've got the accessories mounted back up there. I've got your AC compressor, a brand new water pump. I got the whole housing and assembly. That was kind of a process installing that, but it's in there. And then, of course, the alternator. Uh, what's not on? The timer belt's not on. I got all new seals installed, but unfortunately, this right here, this tensioner, here's where it goes. Uh, it's no good. The tensioner was just making a racket, and I'm not going to put a brand new belt on and have that bearing just making noise, so... Decided to hold off for a couple more days. I've got one on order. More money down the tubes on the old Yugo project. Uh, up on top here, the air pump's going to sit right here. I've got it uh, sitting over there. I'm just cleaning it up. Uh, so, pretty, pretty, pretty good progress. On the back, the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold, they're back on and back in place. New, new exhaust manifold gaskets, new intake manifold gaskets. So, I spared. Not many expenses. I've actually been trying to do this right the first time because uh, it does look like it would be a difficult vehicle to work on with the engine in the car. And I'd rather enjoy it than keep fixing it. So, uh, At the engine bay and all that stuff, nothing's changed. Oh my gosh. Uh, everything's pretty much as it was. I have done a little more cleaning. I've straightened out a few more of the wires, but uh, we've got a long ways to go there. Focusing on the engine, I'll get the engine finished up and uh, move it back into position. Once the engine's in place, I've got the suspension I've got to work on. I've got new control arms, new sway bar bushings, stuff like that. So that's it. <laughs> Y'all want to see a how to video on uh, Yugo Refresh? This is it. The down and dirty of it. If you want to see me actually working on it, let me know in the comments. I, I don't know what people are interested in when it comes to this stuff. I could sit here and wrench for an hour straight or something like that, but I don't know if that's uh, something people really want to learn how to do. Being that there's probably about 500 of these things on the road, I don't see there much in the way of how-to videos, but whatever. Oh, what do you know? It's me again. So, come see the Yugo Part 2, maybe? Yeah. We're taking a trip. Another road trip. Uh, surprisingly, I've been having a real hard time finding some of these little teeny parts for the Yugo. And uh, lo and behold, about two hours from here, which it seems like everything in my life is about two hours from here, uh, there is another Yugo that is for sale uh, it's just parks car it's missing the engine but I, it has all the trim it has a transmission it has all kinds of little doodads that I'm, I'm needing so here we go on a day off I'm gonna be driving down to uh, well down off the mountain I'm gonna stop here and uh, the guy's pretty nice old guy he said uh, give me a hundred bucks and you can take what you want off of it um, I don't know if he realizes how much I want off of it but <laughs> he's gonna find out shortly so the traveling begins and we're going to I actually considered getting the whole car and towing it home but I just don't really need a frame I don't need the body all the fender pieces are good so 
just a bunch of parts. So we're going to drive down. I'll take some uh, before and after photos or maybe even a video if the guy uh, will leave me alone long enough. kind of feel weird doing that in front of somebody. But uh, let's do it. There it is. Uh, very nice gentleman named Phil. He let me take any and every part I wanted off of the car. Uh, and uh, believe me, guys and gals, I wanted lots of parts. I got uh, dashboards and seats and door panels and door handles and keys and ignition switches and turn signals. Oh my, there's just a, there's <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. Yeah. And uh, of course, there's more in the back of the truck. Now, back to the mountains. Okay, we're back. And uh, what a drive, four hours round trip. But totally worth it. Uh, as you can see, I have a beautiful uh, tan dash that's in perfect shape. Unfortunately, I just bought a tan dash that was in perfect shape. But I couldn't let it go to the scrapyard like that. So I did pick it up. If anyone needs one, let me know. And uh, my little rear package shelf was cracked. So I picked up those. I basically gutted the car. The guy was super nice. Uh, there's the heater control box with the... Uh, Heater cables, the underbody, I got the entire steering column, two new keys, plus all the switches. That's really neat. Uh, motor mount was pretty good shape, so I grabbed it. Bunch of miscellaneous. I got, uh, I was missing one of the, uh, the passenger side front uh, seatbelt was not working properly, so I got that. Uh, latches, speakers, speaker grills, hoses, more motor mounts. Uh, God. The coil, ignition system components, the engine was missing, and the transmission was not worth pulling out. But that doesn't mean there was not a lot of good stuff. I got all the emblems off the car, which I, I'm missing a few from mine. Uh, over here, more stuff. There's uh, wiper transmission, wiper arms, the jack. I did get a spare tire, which was cool. He didn't think he had that. Down here, some more stuff, some door handles. There's the original shift boot, which mine didn't have. Um... Steering wheel, latches, locks, stuff like that. Got the whole, it's, uh, that's the uh, antenna assembly, the complete. Got it out of there. Mine's bent, so if I can't straighten it out, I can use that. There's both the uh, door lock uh, handles, which apparently are common to break. Steering wheel, another speaker, washer tanks. Bits and pieces, man. Bits and pieces. Lots of them. Um, and that's not all. The main reason I went was this is mine and it is terribly broken the latch here i'll show you totally busted up there i tried straighten it out I, I was going to continue working on it until i found this advertisement so no need for that anymore two really nice seats much better shape as you can see the fading is nowhere near as bad on these they weren't in such a hot climate um Cable's good, seat slides well on the track. They need to be cleaned up, but the seats aren't ripped, the cushions are good. So, really nice haul there. There's my spare tire. I also got the rear window seal. Uh, and some other little pieces here and there I've got laying around. Um, but overall, there's the other seat that's trash. Um, overall, for $100 and really a, a kind of a nice morning with a, a nice gentleman named Phil who was more than happy to let me take anything and everything I could off of that car because uh, he hated to see stuff go to waste. And the next stop for that car was, unfortunately, the uh, salvage yard. It's going to get crushed. Now, I can tell you guys before you shed a tear over a Yugo getting crushed that that Yugo had significant underbody rot. Um, and it was missing the motor, the radiator, the heater core. He had taken all that stuff apart back in the uh, very early 2000s, late 90s, he thinks. Uh, and he was going to convert it over to electric, but uh, it never happened. So it sat and sat. He said he's pushed it around the yard a few times, but other than that, uh, pieces were missing. Unfortunately, I didn't get an exhaust system, which I was really hoping to get. Uh, but, you know, man, like I said, for $100, I couldn't be happier. I got I got so much more than I thought I was going to get. And I got to, you know, hang out with a really neat guy. So, Phil, if you're out there somewhere, thank you very much. I really appreciated the uh, time we spent together and your help getting everything off and apart. Oh, one more thing he gave me, which is really neat. Uh, this is cool, too. Uh, complete original floor mats. Mine did not have floor mats, including for the trunks or the you know the back hatchback area. That was really nice to uh, to have those. They even have a little Yugo emblem, which is really neat. But this, this is what is cool. An original Yugo of America repair manual, all printed out. Beautiful. 
uh, great condition. If you can find one of these, they go for forty or fifty dollars by themselves. And then uh, he also had the owner's manual and the warranty booklet, and he was uh, passed those along to me as well. So such a great deal, such a great deal, such a great guy, and a good day, <laughs> good day, you going. Of course, my wallet is still hurting from all the money I've spent on this project so far, but it's kind of a necessary evil. You don't get into these restorations or fixer-uppers without uh, without knowing that sometimes it goes a little over budget and sometimes it comes in a little under budget. It's just the yeah, way it works. Owner of Farpoint Farms, and today I've got the engine back in. Actually, tonight, because it took from about 11 o'clock this morning to about 5.45 to get it in. I don't have the right tools. I don't have a cherry picker. I don't have an engine hoist here at the house, although I've been thinking about getting an engine hoist and, and putting it in here. But regardless, uh, because of that, you kind of have to get creative. And I did get creative. And so I've got the engine back in, but uh, it took a while. So let's take a look around, okay? Well, here it is. It is uh, by no means done or ready to be started, but it's in there. Oh, man. What a trip. <laughs> this is a lot of work, guys. Uh, you know, I used to have a cherry picker and an engine uh, hoist and, and, gosh, an engine stand for rebuilding. I got rid of all that stuff when I moved up here. Uh, I was kind of retiring from this whole mess. Anyway, obviously, still got a few jobs left in me. I don't know how well you can see down in the hole there, but new timing belt, new timing belt tensioner, new seals, new belts. Got the air pump hooked up, all new fuel lines, new fuel filter, got new spark plugs waiting for it, got to install the distributor, got to install the fuel pump, got to install the starter, got to install the cables, but it's in there. We've got about 10,000 backing lines I've got to figure out. So there it is, Hugo part, I don't know what part we're at, but been working at it for about a month and a half now and it gets closer so the engine is in now let's take a look at the inside okay the inside and uh, it's looking more car like again isn't it got uh, the front seats in they've been cleaned came out pretty good I've still got to do a little bit of work on the vinyl that's about as good as these seats are gonna get and then we've got our new floor mats Again, uh, I've got a few stains left to clean out. Most of them cleaned up pretty nicely. But the dash is reinstalled. Got the steering wheel back on, the speedometer, odometer, the cluster, all that's back in there. Got my new radio installed. Uh, I've still got to paint these door panels, so uh, I haven't taken them off because I'm having a heck of a time trying to get the, uh, trying to get the right matching paint. But uh, I've got one off, and the rest of them, I've got all the parts to take them off, clean all the window tracks, stuff like that. So that's what's going on there, and uh, and because of that, well, that's why I haven't installed the uh, the rear carpet or the rear seat because I've got to get those two panels off. Still have to do some work on the seat belt on this side too. But overall, it's starting to take hold. And uh, one more thing I'll show you, and then we'll wrap it up. New tires. Yeah, those two are uh, used. Uh, they came with the car. They still have some tread on them. They got a little bit of inner inner edge wear, but they'll be okay. But got two brand new Achilles. Uh, not easy to find 155 13 inch tires, but I got them. So those are installed and ready to go on. Well, that's it for this go around. I'm sure the next time I see you, I'll have the engine uh, pretty much completely back together, and uh, it'll be time to start working on the bottom suspension. And then who knows, right? Almost almost there. Uh, anyway, I hope you can hear me over the sound of the rain. And, uh, Yo, Yugo Project's getting real close now. It's alive. The engine's in, the trans is in. About 95% of the vacuum lines are hooked back up. And it runs. Uh, still waiting on a starter. The starter that's in there is, uh, eh, it's got a dead spot, so we'll go ahead and replace that. But, man, it's getting there. Got to put the hood back on. Got new tires up front here. Back up a little bit. Yeah, got one of the door panels off. My paint finally arrived. Here's a picture of the uh, paint that I'm going to be using. It's a real close match to the color of the dash. So uh, that's great. New seats are in. Rear seat's still out because i got to take those rear panels out to paint them. But, oh man, a lot of work. 
Uh, we've had some really nice warm weather, really unusual for this time of year, but not complaining even slightly. Got some new emblems for the back. All the lights are working now. Yeah, it's coming along. Now it doesn't look too pretty on the outside because it's been stored all year, but oh god, I got the key on. <laughs> but there it is, here's the inside. Got the new dash in there. That's looking pretty good. Got some new dome lights that I've got to finish wiring up. New seats, just got that towel down there to protect them, but and there's those nice Yugo floor mats. Got to clean those up a little bit more, but stereo's in there. All the air conditioning's hooked back up. EGR's hooked up. Air pump's not installed all the way. Waiting on one more part for it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the hood back on here shortly. But yeah, it runs. So let me fire it up and that'll end this video. This is part five. Nearing completion. <laughs> if you enjoy the video, hopefully you'll subscribe and like because there'll be more Yugo in videos. Certainly more farming videos, tractor videos, that sort of stuff. And, of course, CB, ham, and a whole lot of other stuff. I'm thinking about adding a second channel just to do talking-type videos. Take care. It's alive. incredible three month ride. Uh, my little Yugo project here is complete. Took it for its first and second test drives and other than a few minor things that need to be done, she's ready to roll. So it's time to put tags on it and start cruising in this thing. Took it out of the garage today, washed it and waxed it and it looks pretty good. Let me grab the camera and we'll get close up and I'll do you a tour of this mechanically and mostly restored 1988 Yugo GV. Outside not a ton has changed. Uh, Go ahead and do the walk around. Cleaned, replaced a few pieces of rubber trim. I still need to get those new tires uh, or the whole rims off the car again and repaint them. Uh, that was something I just didn't do before I got the wheels back on. I don't want to do it on the car. So I'll pull those off one weekend, paint them up. I think I'm going to go back with silver, uh, the original way it looked. So as we walk around here, I still have included the emblem on. Again, the outside of this car I haven't, haven't finished completely, but mostly it's done. Uh, I've got a new lock. I've got a new rear wiper because the arm and everything were missing. Figured out all the wiring for the lights except for the dome lights. I purchased new dome lights, but I haven't uh, so far. I have not been able to uh, get that wiring figured out. And the uh, the horn when you blow on the horn, the interior dinger goes off. So I'm guessing there's a crossed wire from having the dash out. I'll just have to pull that back apart and look at it. But you know the car looks pretty darn good. This is the original paint job. Sorry, I'm kind of boxed up against the building here, so I can't get a good view of this. Let me back up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, not bad, huh? I mean, the paint still shines. It's got a couple dents and dings, a few rust chips, but no significant anything to report. It's just a nice, clean, 30-something-year-old car. Um, again, I've got to put one headlight in. Uh, the high beam doesn't work. The low beam does work. But uh, got all that taken care of. I'll move around here again and I'll go ahead and open the door and that's where some of the biggest changes have taken place. This car was extremely rough inside. Um, most of the interior came in a box. The rear seat was out, the carpets were out. It's just really rough. Seats were really badly torn. Dash was cracked badly. So uh, major improvements on that. So let me go ahead uh, here and get a little closer. And open the door. And the first thing you'll see, and I made a video about this, uh, the interior paneling, which was just terrible looking. It was like a brightish, yellowy green. It's all been completely redone, and it looks so much better in the car than it did uh, after I finished with the dye job that I did to it. And then we got our seats here. Those both came out of uh, another vehicle. Much, much better shape than the ones that were in there. I need to vacuum again already. Just gravel driveway in the spring, you know. But I've cleaned the carpets. I've got these beautiful floor mats in here now. 
put a nice steering wheel cover on. Added, uh, I don't know how well that shows up, but right there, there's a red switch. Uh, that is a auxiliary fan switch for the radiator, so I can manually control that. And it has a nice little light that stays on to let me know uh, when things are going wrong. AC is all hooked up. I do need to recharge it, and that one vent cover fell down inside of it. I've got to bring home a tool from work to fish it out. It's too far down for me to grab with my fingers. So that's pretty good. I'll rotate here to the back. And uh, again, here you go. Look at this. The back seat's nicely cleaned up, reinstalled. The rear shelf has been recolored. That broken speaker uh, shelf piece right there was just shattered and broken. I fixed that. Got all the speakers rewired. Uh, those panels are cleaned up. It's really gorgeous, guys and gals. Let me go ahead and pop the hood, and I'll show you the engine, and that'll wrap it up. The engine compartment, and this is where most of the major work was done. I'm a mechanic, first and foremost, so I'm always going to take care of mechanical issues. And there was uh, a few a few hundred, a few thousand maybe, mechanical issues. But I've gotten, again, about 99, 98% of them done. And the rest I'll be figuring out here shortly. Uh, nothing that causes the car not to run or run poorly. Radiator was taken in and out of the car multiple times to uh, to clean, gosh, the amount of rust and debris and just junk that built up inside of not only the engine that was in it, but even an engine that sits on the shelf for many years. So that's not so great. Got uh, pulled a used battery out of one of my other cars and put that in there. That'll that'll be permanently this part. Uh, expansion tank's been cleaned. Got new brake fluid, new hoses, new hose clamps. All the vacuum lines, hundreds of little vacuum lines, eh, not hundreds, maybe 35. They're all there, they're all in the right place. And as a result, the car does run very well. I'm very surprised at uh, how well it runs. You know, you, you hear horror stories about Yugos, and I'm here to tell you uh, that is all fantasy, my friends. New starter down there, new plugs, cap rotor wires. Retimed the distributor here just the other day. Got a new timing belt. Cover's been cleaned, air pumps there, air altitude, that, that altitude compensator there was missing, I replaced that. Uh, distributor's been replaced, I've got that AC relay fixed up now, just need to mount that, it's kind of loose. New air filter, obviously, I mean, new everything, fluid-wise, trans drain and fill, uh, can't tell you how many times I had to clean the cooling system, but even did an oil flush on it, just to be sure, even though this engine only had 27,000, just wanted to be sure. Uh, the only things that are missing, as far as the engine goes, is the hose that goes from the air pump to the air pump uh, valve is uh, missing. And so I've chosen not to hook the system up because it just wouldn't work right. Uh, but I have all the parts. I'm just waiting on one hose, and I don't know. It runs great without it. Maybe I won't have to mess with that. I do have a spare tire now. I just have to install that, and uh, that's it. I am going to get it registered and insured this week, and... I hope next Saturday to take this car, the 45 minutes, into town. That's quite a break in, right? So let's see how it runs. Okay, as far as how's it run, pretty darn good. Um, I give it one pump of the gas, and uh, that's it. She fires right up. I'm really digging it. As uh, the gauges go, the odometer works, speedometer works, it's a little bit bouncy. The coolant gauge, temperature gauge, it works. The only thing that's flaky is the uh, gas gauge. Uh, it's just a connection issue. I was messing around with it the other day and it was working. It's intermittent, it's not working currently. This is the fan switch I was talking about. That comes on, lights up, and runs the cooling fan. As far as these other switches, it looks like low speed on the uh, heater fan, like the interior cabin fan doesn't work. But the AC fan works on all modes and uh, yeah, it's a pretty good car. So that's it. I'm Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms, and it is time to enjoy the Yugo. I mean, everyone needs a Yugo sometime, right? I'm going to let this video end with a little driving up the driveway, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.